if you read Charles Dickens' novel, David Copperfield, you'll see the protagonist, David Copperfield, who writes of himself in first person, constantly emphasizing his earnestness. This is a character who is serious, who is engaged, who is sincere, passionate, trustworthy. All the virtues that we see, say, someone like Tennyson exhibit in, in memoriam, a very sincere, serious, engaged meditation on what is transient and what is stable, what is potentially joyful, what is despairing. Earnestness is a primary value in a lot of the great literature of the Victorian age. Obviously, Oscar Wilde knows this in his play called The Importance of Being Earnest. In that play, he seems to be saying, yes, earnestness is important. Um, look at all these characters who are not earnest. The, main ca the characters in the play are not earnest at all. They're not serious. Uh, they're not sincere. Uh, they're not engaged in anything other than their, their distractions from minute to minute. Um, they have no commitments. They have no moral sensibility at all. They are flighty. They are superficial. They are shallow. Uh, the exact opposite of being earnest. And if the play is a satire and, and, and as a comedy of manners, then these extreme representations of the lack of earnestness would suggest to the audience, well, do the opposite and, and be earnest. But of course, the play is not that simple, as, as, as I've also discussed in another lecture. If we look at the farcical elements of the play, well, we realize that, okay, yes, these characters are not earnest in any way, and we should mock them for being so silly, but look at how their, their dialogue sparkles. Look at their wit, look at their turns of phrase, look at, look at how unexpected and, and charming their language is. So it's, it's, it's hard to tell if, if, if Oscar Wilde wants us to um, simply mock these characters or maybe imitate these characters. So this tension plays out in the, the final part of the play where Jack, of course, learns that he does indeed have a brother. He'd been lying throughout the play that he had a brother in London, and now it turns out he does have a brother, Algernon. And, of course, he'd been um, lying uh, about the fact that his name was Ernest um, when his name was really Jack, and it turns out his name really is Ernest. So now, of course, the final moment of the play says, I know about the importance of being Ernest. Uh, what is that importance? Well, in the world of the play, this is an utterly farcical line. The importance of being earnest is that you are named earnest, and that means you get to marry the woman you want to marry. The earnestness has nothing to do with his character. Earnestness is simply a name that has been bestowed upon him due to social convention. So his earnestness is the opposite of earnestness. So we need to get that, that, that a, there's a theory of language implied here um, in that end of the play. And that is that what makes me one thing or another is not what I am, but what I am called. And that what I am called is based purely on the conventions of society. What I'm called is arbitrary, ultimately. So the importance of being earnest in that last line um, ultimately is ironic in that it's about the opposite of being earnest. Jack is not being earnest at all. Jack is ultimately treating himself as if he is not a, not a thing but a word. Now, of course, it's interesting to note that he is mistaken for a three-volume novel by Miss Prism. Uh, so Wilde is highlighting the fact that that Jack is a being of writing and therefore his identity is not something that is real that exists outside of language. His identity is purely a linguistic construct. And if that is the case, then we ask ourselves, is it possible to have earnestness at all? Is it possible to have goodness at all? Is it possible to have truth or beauty at all? If there are no such things as enduring realities that we attach language to, but instead, if there are only linguistic concepts that we fit existing things in, 
then what does it mean for there to be truth or beauty or goodness? Well, it just means that these are linguistic concepts we've come up with and we attach these concepts to certain occasions. This is an example of an of, of old-fashioned philosophical term known as nominalism. Uh, nominalism suggests that there are no such things as, as universals in the world. There are only particular things that we attach linguistic concepts to. That's nominalism. As opposed to realism in a philosophical sense, which is developed by Plato, um, among others, which says that Things are what they are by virtue of participating in universals. So this chair I'm sitting in is a chair by virtue of the fact that it participates in some universal entity known as chairness, um, which exists in this realm of forms. But someone comes along later on, like William of Ockham, from whom we get the phrase Ockham's razor, who says, no, 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 no. Um, this chair is a chair by virtue of the fact that it's a particular thing that simply has this sound attached to it, chair. So we can see that, that the play, The Importance of Being Earnest, in addition to being a drama, is a philosophical meditation on how meaning is created. Now we may despair, oh my gosh, uh, we can only be earnest if we are randomly attached to a sound, <laughs> earnestness, and that seems to be what Jack is implying it's important to be earnest, not insofar as it's important to be sincere, but it's important to get lucky enough to have that word attached to you. In an essay written um, around the time of the play, The Decay of Lying, Oscar Wilde suggests that art is superior to life, that even an artistic rendering of nature is better than nature. Why? Wordsworth would certainly not agree with this. But Lamb, in this philosophical dialogue, suggests that um, a painting of a landscape, once I study the painting, I can see parts of the landscape and appreciate parts of the landscape that I would never have seen or appreciated had I not seen the painting. So in this way, art is not only superior to nature, but in some ways is prior to nature and creates nature. We can only start understanding the natural world uh, if we have studied artistic renderings of it first. Now if we take that seriously, and certainly Wilde does, it's a primary tenet of aesthetic, uh, aestheticism, which I described in the lecture on, on the Fin de Siec. Aestheticism is the idea that, that, that art is not out to depict some kind of real world, but art simply exists for itself to depict beauty, to give a sensual pleasure to uh, those who um, participate um, with the work of art, whatever um, form it takes. If we take this seriously, then we can start thinking, well, all right, maybe the nominalism is a good thing, because if it, it, gives, it gives us a sense of freedom that our words create meaning. Words don't reflect a meaningful world. Words create a meaningful world. So then we can start seeing the importance of being earnest as a play with its sparkling wit, um, with its verbal charm, as being lovely, um, as being even, even beautiful and valuable but only insofar as it is a product of this nominalist point of view. In other words, nominalism for someone like Wilde would be a good thing uh, because it, again, it opens up the freedom to create without being attached to some kind of stable um, realm um, of, of real things. So that last line, the importance of being earnest is ironic in that way too, in that on the one hand, it seems to be suggesting there's no such thing as earnestness, really, and that's bad. But also, there's no such thing as earnestness, really, and that's good. Uh, because, again, it can generate a, a, the freedom and the playfulness required for writing a, a, a bright, scintillating play, like The Importance of Being Earnest.